Hello everyone, I am Vikramaditya here. Welcome to Jade Soft Tech and in this session, I am going to discuss with you all the important documents, in fact the most important documents that we make use of in a full life cycle project, in any SAP full life cycle project or implementation project. So the most important documents used in SAP real time project. There could be many kinds of documents that are prepared during the implementation or a full life cycle project of a SAP uh, implementation or uh, upgradation rollout or uh, you know a migration project. Some of the important documents are what I'm going to discuss in this session. These are the most important documents that we have. Project Charter and what this, what this document is all about. It will be a high level document describes the statement of scope, outline project objectives, identify main stakeholders and define authority of project manager. So it is basically to outline the objectives, identify the main stakeholders, who should be there in the project and what would be the role of each particular person, who would be the project manager, what would be the authority of a project manager uh, and there will be different terminologies in the different uh, projects like uh, in some projects they call a project manager as a captain and in some uh, projects projects they call them as delivery managers and different roles different naming conventions and different uh, uh, authorities that way they are going to have will all be described in a project charter document it's a high level document the second thing is as is template it's a document usually prepared by the business team documenting the present business scenarios before the SAP has been implemented. So we first study, try to understand the business of our customer or the client and uh, we would make a note of all those things in as is document, how the business is happening before the SAP has been implemented. That's what we are going to make a list of all these things in as is document. Now the next one is uh, we also have something called to be document and we'll also have gap analysis document we get to come to that so business blueprint a kind of legal document that binds both business as well as a consulting company to deliver the commitments usually includes the gap analysis as well so in in, in the in the in the business blueprint so basically we prepare an as is document we prepare a to be document the to be document will be having all the list of all the things that needs to be implemented in SAP and we make a gap analysis document again which will have those things which are not there in the SAP which the business needs which needs to be customized configured or developed by us as a company so those kind of things uh, we'll be making down writing down in the to be document gap analysis and then we'll make a legal document uh, which will be signed by both the parties and we have to bind to it and it's a uh, it's something which is uh, the most important document in all the all of this because that's an understanding between the client and the company which is implementing the project and this is basically based on the gap analysis document then we have the bpml the business process master list list of high level business processes of the client usually used to monitor the progress so we make a list of all the things that have been available in this project the resources that are available in the project and then we will be writing down the business processes of the client what exactly uh, is the functionality of the process uh, and then we'll make a list of all the processes like you know finance department what's happening uh, you know hr department what's happening all these things will be doing in the BP, bpm now the gaps issue register this entails the gaps that can be fulfilled and its impact on the project. So now we will be making a list of all the gaps which are been you know, identified when we are doing the ISS and to be document and then we will be, we'll be documenting everything in the gap analysis document that can be and that will be again registered in the gaps issue register uh, and it to be fulfilled it, its impact on the project and configuration document Configuration documents relating to various business processes shows how it has been mapped in, in SAP. So we'll have a configuration document uh, 
primarily for each module or each department of an organization for example for finance we'll have a configuration document we'll have for sales we have a configuration document in some projects we'll have just one configuration document in which all the list of all the departments which had been uh, in, involved in that company will come into picture and everything is documented in a single document template otherwise in some in some projects it will be in different different uh, uh, documents so functional specification this is the mostly written in a business language how a new requirement has to be achieved business language in the sense we are going to just write in plain english for example if you have to develop a report program in which you need to create a report on to display sales order data so you are going to dis you can you are going to write in the functional specification display sales order number but whereas the same thing when it comes to technical specification we write the same thing in the technical terms instead of writing uh, get the data from sales order header table into uh, sales order header table and the first field is sales order number that we'll be writing in the technical specification as use the vbak table and get the vbeln field so that in the in the technical terms we'll talk in the technical specification but the concept what we are writing in the functional specification will be further and uh, detailedly written in the technical specification more technically as the name indicates it's more, more of technical now technical specification document this contains the minute technical details of the functional specification prepared by developers with the help of functional consultants so we are going to take the reference of functional specification and prepare the technical specification if we go back and observe the configuration document will have lot of configurations that needs to be involved that needs to be done but the functional specification will specifically have a single configuration or a single concentrated concept that we need to focus on so there can be multiple functional specifications derived from a single configuration document that we need that, that we need to keep in mind and if at all if you are a functional consultant you would be taking functional specification as your reference and then you start doing the, your customization and configuration you will we will not we may not go further into building a technical specification but whereas there are many technical developments that have to be done by the technical team for that the functional team will prepare a functional specification and give it handout over to the technical team and the technical team in turn will develop a technical specification document now the technical specification document as we already discussed contains the minute technical details of the functional specification prepared by developers with the help of functional consultants uh, unit test documents this document is proof of the testing of the transaction code in testing client or the quality or quality quality client or testing client of the development server so when whenever we have done with our customization configuration or development of the project out of the of the objects we in turn test it uh, internally in the development server when we are okay with that whatever is the expectation of the client if we have achieved it then we'll go ahead and prepare a prepare a, 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 a document called a unit test document and then we'll move our objects or customization configurations to quality server now in the quality server the testing team has to take over and test what we have developed in the development server now the question is how do the testing team know what you have done and what is the uh, what is the client requirement and what you have done so the client requirement they can see the functional specification or technical specification and get an idea about what is what was the client's expectations then comes what is that you have done and how to test it that will be done through that will be done through their knowledge the, the, the idea that they get from the unit test document unit test document happens to be the most important document to be uh, referred by the testing team to test it further and approve it and in the previous uh, sessions i have already explained different types of testings that we do in a in a in a project so you can refer to that what are the different types of testings done by the testing team and then we have the integration test documents this document is a proof of the integration test done in the system uh, and it could also include the screenshot so you do integration testing in the development server and then you keep a screenshots of what you have done now there is a test plan test plan is a high level document emphasizing how the test activities are to be completed detailing scope so when we have the unit test plan 
uh, we again have uh, sometimes or in the unit test plan itself we uh, we define everything uh, how to test it but again if we have an individual test plan then we'll have a detailing scope approach resources and schedule etc so everything everything will be done in the test plan we will be giving the test activities that needs to be completed then we have the test scripts detailed step by step document which are used for the purpose of testing these are very helpful for the to the testers in order to test the transactions then we have we create the test scripts test scripts are basically the screenshots of what you have tested and how do you have tested and what was what was the input and what is the output everything will be given in the maintained in the test scripts in some projects they combine this unit test document test plan and test scripts all in a single document so in some projects they keep it separate so you need to keep that in mind what are the documents that we have we are using in that particular implementation project is what we need to understand and user acceptance test document this document are the proof of the tests that have been conducted by the users users means i mean whoever is working from the client perspective or from the customer perspective they will be coming and testing those will be the end users of this entire project that we are doing they'll be using it so someone from there the client end will come and test it and when everything goes well then they approve it uh, they, they they legally approve it saying that whatever you have whatever we have uh, uh, expected is been done by the team and if at all if there are any changes also they, the client will be uh, mentioning it to us and then we'll be re, re, re change that or update that and then we, we give it back to them so test issue testing issues log so accountability required the defect 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 log also is maintained here this log contains the brief description of the defects accountable person close date and etc so for example you have done some development uh, of, a, of an object or a report and then there are some defects which have been identified the testing team then they maintain a default defect defect log for that and they resend it to the person who has to fix it the person who developed it will be fixing it obviously and then when will be the closing date also will be mentioned in the testing testing uh, issues log then we have the transaction user guides to uses or end user documents these are end user documents which are being used by the business users for the future use for example you have developed your own z transaction code or z programs or anything which is you the customizable things that you have done needs to be documented and explained to the end users or in some cases super users and that will be done through a document we prepare a document and then in give them the knowledge transfer uh, for that we need to have the transaction user guides and end user documents wherein we we make a list of all the transaction codes that we have you we have created or the changes that we have done according to each transaction code so those are called transaction user guides user training presentations these are powerpoint presentation that are prepared for the purpose of training the business users or the end users or super users so it'll be these are the people who are from the client client perspective so we will be explaining them what is the what is that we have done in the implementation project and how to make use of that for your business purpose is what we are going to explain them in a presentations and sometimes we will go to the client location and explain them give them the training knowledge transfer and come back or we'll hand over the documents so that in turn their end users or the super users from the client perspective understand the document and explain it to the end users so the people who will be delivering the that explanation might be the super users of the client location or maybe you yourself can do that from by going into the client location so we'll be creating user training presentations for this all documents which we are talking about sap gives the templates to the, to our company for example if ibm is implementing the project for bmw then uh, uh, sap will be giving out all these templates of all these documents to ibm now there, there is there, there are three different ways in which we'll be we're going to uh, use the pro, use these templates one thing is we can use the exact templates that sap has given to ibm or bmw the client can can uh, suggest their own uh, pro uh, templates you know so they, we can put all the sap templates aside and follow the templates that give that are given by the client or customer or the uh, in in our case in an example that i have taken bmw 
Now there might be another perspective where IBM can suggest that they have a better documented templates which uh, can be approved by the client and then they can use it. So there are three types of documents that a company can uh, a implementation product might uh, might have. One is SAP provided templates. Second one is client provided templates or our own company templates. So we need to keep that in mind. So risk register. There is a document for risk register. It is important uh, to include anticipated risks, probabilities, impacts, and countermeasures and risk owner etc. For example, there is a risk of uh, you know uh, a, a particular or uh, a particular center is shut down. For example, if the implementation is done by Bangalore by Bangalore location, IBM Bangalore location. If at all, if Bangalore location shuts down, and there is a, is there any other alternative from where we can start implementing it or doing it? So this is kind of a risk management that we have, a risk register, and also we'll also write uh, write down some risk register. Like if at all, if this transaction code doesn't work. What is the alternative that the client has to do or the customer has to do or the end user has to do is what we need to write in the risk register and go live metrics. This document summarizes the end user experience, uh, end user satisfaction level, etc. So the end users will rate the implementation and according to that, we are going to get the feedback from the end users. If at all, if they have some uh, grievances also can be mentioned here in the go live metrics and uh, we'll try to solve it from our end, whichever is possible. Post go live issues, a log, accountability required. So in this, this is a log of everyday issues. Post go live issues, any issues have come. We maintain that in the post go live issues log, accountable uh, person and its status until the process is handed over to the support team. This is basically an Excel sheet in which we are going to mention this. So these are the most important documents that we have we, we use in an implementation part. There are a lot of other documents also we are going to use in, in, an, in an implementation project. But I have just listed out the most important things which might we might use in an implementation project. And uh, it's not very, very exhaustive, but the minimum required for a project. Thanks for watching this video. Do write your feedback in the comments and let me know how I can improve my videos and what are the different topics that you would like to see in, in the next sessions. And uh, uh, if at all, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash jsofttech. And if at all, if you are looking out for any kind of uh, software trainings, you can contact us at training at the jsofttech.com. And if you are looking out for any kind of jobs, you can contact us jobs at the jsofttech.com. Thank you. Have a great day.